Good evening. You are joining with Spotlight. To jab or to not jab of your children is the main concern these days if you are a parent who has children, who has children going to school and who wants to go to school and has been uh, not going to school because of the pandemic that has been happening in the country and also in the world. Very recently, Sri Lanka started vaccinating the adolescents of the country, targeting the A-level examination and also the resumption of schools in the country. So uh, in, in it's happening in stages because right now the most senior students are receiving the vaccination in the country, which started very recently. Uh, meanwhile, the third dose is also around the corner for uh, those who are in the front line. We call the front line workers. But when it comes to the world, the U.S., uh, countries like the U.S., Canada and also U.K. are systematically rolling out their third doses as well. At the same time, uh, countries like Israel have already done with, their, with the one third of the entire population when it comes to the healthy population. Although it can be regardless of the, UN, uh, the criticism of the U, uh, WHO as well. But how are we doing it? Uh, do we have a strategy or do we have a plan? And is there scientific facts backed back in this decision that we have taken to vaccinate our children? To discuss on this matter, we have invited a guest for the studio today. On Spotlight, joining with us today is Dr. Surante Pereira, consultant pediatrician, Minister of uh, Health Sri Lanka, and also the vice president of the uh, elect of the Sri Lanka Medical Association, and also the past president of the Perinatal uh, Society of Sri Lanka as well, joining with us today to discuss on these matters, these two extremes we mentioned. Good evening, Doctor. Yep. Good, Good evening, studio. Well, yeah. Good evening. Right. As a as a uh, uh, opening for the discussion, let me ask you about the. Um, the status of the Sri Lanka's of Sri Lanka's uh, children's vaccination progress. Yes, uh, that's a good question. Uh, we started uh, vaccinating children a uh, few weeks back. Uh, most important thing is uh, WHO has proposed a roadmap mm -hmm. uh, when when to vaccinate and whom to be vaccinated. And uh, according to the, that roadmap, uh, we started vaccinating adult population, especially the elderly, more mm -hmm. than 60 years. And uh, then we prioritize vaccinating between 18 and 60 years, the ch people who have comorbidities. Uh, what I meant is uh, some people have diabetes, some people have certain problems uh, leading to immune deficiency, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. So uh, we vaccinated them. Then we vaccinated the other needy crowd, especially vulnerable groups like pregnant mothers. Then it, is the, it was the time to talk about vaccinating children. Mm -hmm. Among the children also, we did not have any uh, doubt about uh, vaccinating children with comorbidities, especially children who have asthma, mm -hmm. heart disease, uh, can survivors from the cancer, and then the children who have joint problems, they are on uh, long-term medications, and uh, some of the medications which are given to other illnesses also mm -hmm. cause drop in uh, immunity. And according to the limited data we had, mm -hmm. uh, we came to know uh, the most of the deaths happen in a smaller scale among the children uh, who have these problems. Mm -hmm. So we prioritize that group and then we move to more older group uh, of uh, children, especially 11 years and above. Right. Uh, that is where we are. Okay, so does that mean that it's not mandatory for uh, the parents to present their children to, uh, through vaccination? Is it, should it be done? From a medical point of view, what do you think? Is it necessary or is it recommended? What do you think? As uh, pediatricians, child specialists, we think when we recommend vaccinations, we have looked at all the available data mm -hmm. and we have looked at, we have studied what is happening in other countries. Mm -hmm. So when we make our conclusions, we, have, we will make it uh, in view of current uh, situation and uh, parents should not have any doubts about it mm -hmm. and ultimate beneficiaries would be children. So right. uh, my personal opinion is all children who are eligible to be vaccinated should be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Right. So when it comes to the, now we are, it, it's something sort of a manifesting uh, thought in everybody's head and in their hearts where there can be a fourth or, a, or another wave that's coming. If there's going to be a wave that's coming, um, maybe in a few months or weeks, we don't know, uh, will this vaccination process on, this to, on, the, on the children uh, could be a, a, a reason to for that to avoid. Yeah, because uh, like uh, initially the discussion was to vaccinate at least uh, sixty percent of the population according to WHO. Mm -hmm. Then they raised the bar saying that it's seventy percent. Seventy percent. And then the then the general consensus was 
we should vaccinate 80%. Mm -hmm. When we looked at some of the countries like Israel, mm -hmm. who have achieved this target very early, mm -hmm. then they had breakthrough infections. So we came to an idea that at least 90% mark should be vaccinated. When we talk about 90% mark, this includes part of the population of the children. Mm -hmm. So we vaccinate, has to vaccinate children also. Then the question was, uh, wh what is the, uh, uh, the difference between like vaccinating ch population against uh, uh, having quarantine measures, restrictive measures uh, to uh, uh, p prevent the spread mm -hmm. of the virus. So by now we know uh, vaccination is more superior, mm -hmm. but the challenges were one thing is how we are going to buy the vaccines right. and how we are going to give it. Uh, but surprisingly, mm -hmm. we have had uh, some record uh, numbers. We were able to vaccinate. I think the highest number we achieved around uh, passing 400,000 mm -hmm. per day. Per uh, we, we have never done it. Right. Uh, but uh, uh, nothing to be surprised also. Mm -hmm. In a pandemic, we experienced extraordinary things. Mm -hmm. When we have the virus, uh, the virus uh, kills many uh, people, people yeah. and then the numbers are very high. The uh, uh, wards become full of these patients, and uh, staff also get infected, and it's chaos. So a, a pandemic brings chaos, mm. and it's very difficult for the healthcare professionals, frontline officers, as well as the uh, political uh, parties, as well as the governing body. Mm. Yeah. It's a very challenging situation. So at the same time, the measures we take also should be extraordinary. So, uh, our attitude towards uh, uh, controlling the spread as well as even the simple task like vaccinating, mm -hmm. we must surpass the ordinary numbers. This is what we are experiencing. Mm -hmm. So you think like uh, giving vaccination to the children will actually help it to help us to avoid a fourth pandemic? Yeah, a fourth wave. Uh, in the sense uh, it will contribute uh, preventing it. Preventing it. Uh, we are seeing, uh, currently we see a lesser number of uh, patients in the in hospitals mm -hmm. as well as like uh, in other countries uh, now they have achieved uh, certain good mark some of the countries Scandinavian countries mm -hmm. Israel uh, Singapore right. they have surpassed 80 uh, percent of the population being vaccinated mm -hmm. now we are seeing uh, sun rising uh, COVID cases among the children so right. uh, this shows we have to vaccinate children is it because do you think is it because that Children are considered as uh, super spreaders because they can, you know, mingle with their, with their uh, you know, uh, the colleagues and come back home with the disease. Who knows? Can yeah, uh, there was a talk about uh, children being uh, super spreaders, but mm -hmm. according to the evidence we have, children are not super spreaders, mm -hmm. but actually they can spread some of the infection. Uh, when the uh, adult population is uh, vaccinated, uh, mm -hmm. they have protection. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, other thing is, uh, uh, when we look at the existing data, it shows uh, rather than super spreaders, mm -hmm. sometimes children become the victims of the mm -hmm. uh, virus and then they get it from their own parents, parents or yeah. the members of the, uh, fa their family. Right. So which means now when you give them the vaccine, there's no need to worry and there's no need to close the schools again as well in case there's another outbreak in the future. That's it. What do you think about that? Uh, I mean, vaccinating and opening of the schools are two entities. We do not want to uh, make it happen like simultaneously. Right. And uh, second thing is uh, when we open the schools, teachers uh, would be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And majority of the teachers, I think uh, uh, when we look at the data, only uh, 20, 30,000 mm -hmm. uh, more to be vaccinated, right. including the ancillary staff. And then the uh, people who provide transport, who work in canteens, who work in office in the schools, uh, they are being vaccinated and not only that the family members that way children uh, come to school uh, in a very uh, when the environment and the people are uh, not spreading the vaccine mm -hmm. uh, so the chances of children being get infected is also less, very less. when the children are being vaccinated we have prioritized children with comorbidities right. this provide equal chance for them to uh, study uh, the uh, study carry out their studies uh, against the healthy children. Right. So the cha we have equalized the chances. So this way, I think uh, when we open the school, gradually we are opening, uh, already primary schools uh, uh, below 200 uh, 
children we have uh, uh, opened mm -hmm. and uh, on 25th all the schools around I think 9,000 schools uh, in Sri Lanka mm -hmm. uh, we are ha they have primary uh, sections mm -hmm. and they will be opened mm -hmm. I think uh, children are relatively safe but we have to adhere to all the health measures which we have stipulated Right, so does that mean that uh, schools are being opened on 25th for the junior students, but then again at the same time they're not vaccinated? Is that going to be a problem? No, as I said earlier, uh, they are in a very safe environment, right. and then they are young, and then, then they have the uh, innate immunity. They can counteract these things. They if you look at the, uh, how the population curve grows, mm -hmm. uh, when they are younger, they have more uh, T lymphocytes and other um, uh, and uh, be mechanism to develop antibodies and very stronger mechanisms to develop antibodies and counteract this threat. Mm -hmm. And then when they get older, especially 60 years plus, uh, their immunity is weaker. Mm -hmm. So the children have a natural immunity. Even if they get COVID, uh, the chances of them dying is very, very minimum. minimum. And then when they, are, uh, when they interact with the adults, when the adults are being vaccinated already, I think they are safer. Mm -hmm. that mm. Right. Now, that's a critical situation going on when it comes to ideas amongst uh, parents and uh, students and sometimes uh, the relatives as well of these families, uh, saying that, uh, now the doctors could be saying, okay, get, please get vaccinated, everybody has to be vaccinated, but then at, th at the same time, the parents are thinking that whether these doctors and these medical professionals are hiding something from the society, saying that, okay, because we were speaking about different kinds of, um, um, could be gossip, could be like words of mouth, where they said they have different kinds of uh, um, side effects that could happen, side such as uh, infertility and different other diseases. Do you think, what, what do you think about that? Do you think that's the case, that you just, w you just want to get everybody vaccinated so that the pandemic can becomes over, regardless of the health of the uh, society? That's a good question. Uh, we don't have to hide. Mm -hmm. As uh, health professionals, uh, we uh, we stick to all the ethics. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the second thing is, when we make decisions, mm -hmm. we look at the benefits mm -hmm. against risk. Right. And then we study all the scientific data available in other countries. And there are a lot of publications. Mm -hmm. uh, when we make decisions, we make very safer decisions. And this is not a trial to give vaccine and see what are the outcomes in Sri Lankan population. Mm -hmm. The vaccination of the children has been initiated in USA and other Western countries. Mm -hmm. Currently, uh, millions of children have been vaccinated. So the side effects are minimum. Common side effects are they can get fever, pain in the uh, vaccinated site, and a little bit of soreness. Mm -hmm. That's, all. That's all. And then taking uh, paracetamol will mm -hmm. help to mitigate all these effects. And uh, other thing is, uh, uh, reality, they can have involvement of the heart, so we call it myocarditis and pericarditis, right. especially with the second dose. So if we vaccinate one million children, right. the 17 to 32 children will have this, uh, it's not percent, uh, but it's a percentage, it's a number. So 32 to 17 children can have this problem. And the outcomes are good. Uh, none of them have died. And only thing is they will have a shortness of breath, chest pain, uh, and then they will be so admitted to hospitals and looked after. Mm -hmm. According to the data we have currently in Sri Lanka, we have not come across this problem and only reported case of uh, mild fever and pain in the site. And uh, even we did not have any anaphylactic reactions. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are confident that we have made a very good decision, but we are very cautious and we are, uh, have a good surveillance mechanism. Uh, Sri Lanka is a country we are uh, we have been uh, like uh, appreciated very well by the leading organization UNICEF and WHO right. regionally because of our uh, vaccination program. We uh, like uh, we vaccinate two month on from starting from the BCG and the second, fourth, sixth month and nine and the one year, and so it continues. And our vaccination percentage coverage is uh, in most of the areas uh, around 98, 99 percent is the highest in the uh, South Asian region. Mm -hmm. So we are proud of it. So our attitude towards vaccination is uh, really positive That's compared right. with the developed countries where the, there are a lot of anti-vaccination groups. Mm -hmm. They uh, spread a yes. lot of theories, mm -hmm. st uh, stories about it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think our parents are very intelligent. 
uh, they have read a lot, they get a lot of information, they have a lot of trust and uh, I think uh, this should be the another uh, vaccination program we have initiated. Uh, in years time when we turn back and see, uh, my, my wish and I hope uh, we should see all, all positive things. Here and there we may see a few negative uh, remarks but otherwise I think uh, we will achieve the set goals in a timely manner. Right. Okay. Then speaking about the clinical trials you mentioned, so, um, when it comes to uh, the taking samples of um, children out there, uh, I picked up on the internet that uh, the numbers are somewhere around 2,000 when it comes to the individuals who have been tested, uh, gone through this rigorous process when it comes to children. Compared to the entire global population of children, 2,000 seems a very small sample. What do you think? Do you think that would represent everybody and all the types of uh, immun 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 immunities in the world? Uh, when, when they started, uh, uh, especially uh, when they started ba giving vaccines to children, uh, in the United States they selected around, as you said, uh, 2,000 as, uh, as well as in uh, UK. UK, UK mm -hmm. I, I know it's 2,000. Mm -hmm. But uh, with the government advice and the FDA ap ap uh, advice, uh, they Im increased the number. Mm -hmm. Now they have given several thousands right. at the trial version. This was, this was happened some time back and they observed the outcome. Outcomes were good actually and then the, especially in the UK trial they looked at whether to give one dose or second dose. Mm -hmm. uh, they felt like uh, the one dose is sufficient right. because the adequate amount of immunity they develop but they are observing the data. So uh, in, in, same line, in the same line in Sri Lanka uh, for the children who have comorbidities we have given the first dose and after one week, uh, sorry four weeks we give the second dose. But uh, for the other healthy children, mm. uh, already we have commenced vaccinating. Uh, first, we started vaccinating 18 years and 19 years. Mm. Now, from uh, after 21st of uh, this month, we started vaccinating 16 years and uh, 17 years old uh, children. So that means grade 11 and upwards. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the current uh, guideline is just to give one vaccine for the healthy children and uh, Sri Lanka College of Pediatricians, they have a, we have appointed a committee, smaller committee, mm -hmm. to study whether to give single dose or second, two doses for children between 12 and 15. 15. Uh, we expect uh, that uh, re their recommendation also uh, to ca come out uh, in uh, coming weeks mm -hmm. and we hope to uh, give this to the Ministry of Health mm -hmm. and uh, then this group will also will be vaccinated. When we look at globally, mm -hmm. currently uh, there are some research uh, as I said, larger uh, groups ha are being involved. Uh, one third of the current Pfizer vaccine uh, uh, is being given to children between five years and uh, 12 years. Between five, year, uh, five years and 12 years. Right. Uh, one third of the dose. Right. And the outcome seems to be good. And they have a Pfizer group have ap applied for the uh, approval, get the clearance from the FDA. Right. When we look at the Sinopharm, mm -hmm. uh, uh, WHO has not recommended yet to be given to children. Mm -hmm. But in China, uh, three years and onwards, uh, they have vaccinated with Sinopharm. Right. And according to the data available, uh, they, we ha they have not experienced anything. I think uh, almost all the children population about, uh, between uh, tw uh, 12 and 20 years mm -hmm. have been vaccinated in China. So we have good data. Right. Uh, because if you look at the, our population, 25% mm -hmm. of our population belong to youth, 24 years and below. Mm -hmm. So if we want to reach a mark of 90, definitely part of that population has to be vaccinated. Vaccinated, right. Okay, and uh, so when it comes to these vaccines, now we know that we got the second vaccine and we are going to get the third vaccine eventually as well because the vaccine's efficiency, efficacy goes down eventually. Uh, similarly for the children as well, you mentioned that it, it one dose at the moment is enough or like a, a one third of a dose is enough for the youngest children. But when it wears out, do you, uh, does the ministry or the government uh, take uh, care of these uh, ones without the immu immunity uh, to give them a second dose the ch among the children? Uh, currently it has been discussed at one of the uh, specific committees appointed to study about these vaccines. Uh, Ministry of Health in agreement to give this uh, uh, third dose to frontline workers, healthcare workers, as well as uh, elderly population, about 60 years, 
uh, because they are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the, the people feel after six to nine months, there is a significant drop in mm -hmm. percentage of their immunity against COVID-19, especially right. in these groups. Mm -hmm. Not only that, between 18 and 60 years, uh, uh, people who have uh, special illnesses, mm. there are children, uh, uh, people who have chronic kidney disease, right. and some people have uh, like uh, illnesses like HIV, mm -hmm. and then some pe uh, people are on uh, certain medications which lower the immunity. Mm -hmm. uh, they should be also get a third dose. Third dose. Uh, right. Giving uh, third dose to the children have not been discussed. Discussed yet? Okay, even the second dose still is being discussed. Yeah, that's right. Right. And what about the pregnant ladies? Now we they received two doses, and the third one is also in the um, in the corner. Uh, will that be healthy for them to have the th th third dose as well while they are pregnant? So when we talk about the pregnancy, it's slightly different when it comes to the third dose. Mm -hmm. uh, during the pregnancy, initially, we when we started in month of, if I'm right, uh, we had a group. Uh, MCH co-group for COVID-19. Mm -hmm. We brought uh, three associations together in that uh, committee. Uh, I formed that. Uh, I, I am one. I am the one. Of, I am one of the persons who initiated it. Right. We brought mm -hmm. Sri Lanka College of Pediatricians, uh, College of Obstetricians, and Perinatal Society under one umbrella, uh, and then the Family Health Bureau as well as the Ministry representatives of, of the Public Health. Right. And then the, we initiated actually vaccinating of the pregnant mothers in month of July. Mm -hmm. And at that time, when we initiated, we uh, uh, vaccinated the pregnant mothers who are in the second trimester. Right. And then we gave sign of arm and then with a one, four weeks difference. Mm -hmm. uh, but now the current context uh, uh, with that uh, using those, uh, uh, using that experience, we vaccinate pregnant mothers uh, uh, with sign of harm uh, and uh, even the Pfizer can be given at any trimester. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you talk about the third uh, dose, actually related to the pregnant mothers, third dose comes with the second pregnancy. Right. So if they have a second pregnancy, right. they can have it third dose and uh, that third dose can be any vaccine we are giving because already two popular b vaccines uh, are, one is sign of harm, other one is Pfizer, both can be given in the third, uh, second pregnancy because in the first pregnancy already two doses have been given. Uh, in this uh, group, mm -hmm. when we talk about the third dose, it's slightly different. Mm -hmm. The definition of the third dose uh, when we compare uh, with the elderly population. Right. Okay, thank you so much, Doctor. I think today's discussion was very insightful when it comes to, especially for the uh, for the parents out there who were concerned about getting the uh, vaccine for their uh, children, for their children, and also for themselves when it comes to the third dose at the same time. So thank you so much, doc Doctor. We had Doctor uh, Surant Perera, consultant uh, pediatrician, Ministry of Health, Sri Lanka, and also the Vice President Elect of the Sri Lanka Medical Association and the past President of the. Uh, Perinatal Society of Sri Lanka as well joining with us today uh, to discuss about these two extremes about the third dose and the children's vaccination. Thank you so much for joining in once again. Exactly. And we'll see you next week with an another insightful discussion on Spotlight. Have a good night.